Well, greetings and salutations. Selden here. Uh, I just want to do probably a little tip uh, board today on uh, just long games and just a couple of strategies to use in the long games. <clears throat> I've uh, been uh, rank one now for the last couple of weeks, which has been really good. More than that, have a look though at uh, allies. Very proud of that. I can't seem to be. Uh, you know, completely bombed out. Uh, the Allies lost two two games in the Allies, which is uh, pretty strange, even the qualifying. <laughs> so as last season, I was three uh, with Allies, but uh, can't seem to make the grade this uh, this uh, this this turn. But uh, doing okay with with Axis. Uh, so rank one Axis Axis at the moment. So uh, I'm just going to show you this really cool game. I really appreciate this game with uh, General. AM that I'm playing right now. Uh, he's he's played really well, I've got to say. Uh, obviously, high level platinum play. Um, we're in round 16, and you occasionally get these long games that just go on for round after round after round. The longest I've ever had is 39 rounds with uh, El Principino. Uh, but this is shaping up into a, a long term round. In a game of chess, this would basically be a stalemate position. We don't really get stalemates on access and allies because at least there is the IPC. Uh, uh, you get the IPC type um, uh, game, and even if it's pretty much equal or a stalemate, one of the players will be earning more than the others, and eventually can get a bit of an advantage. So just have a look at a little bit of the gameplay. So what happened in this game was uh, I obviously uh, came in. I think the gameplay for the Germans wasn't strong. Um, so I can usually get Karelia and then break through, fork, uh, I often fork Russia and West Russia if they've got a strong West Russia present, which I think he had here, and then um, come down to West Russia and fork uh, Russia and Caucasus to basically be able to take the Caucasus. And I've got a video on uh, how the fork uh, tactic works. And then also what I had to do is I think there was quite a number of bad battles. There was a, a lot of blitzkrieging type attacks, which I might do a separate video on. Uh, but basically you, you start off with a wave of infantry or slow moving units. And then uh, to, to catch up to that, you have uh, built some tanks, maybe on round two or three for Germany to catch up with the infantry. So that it's all hitting in one big punch. Um, and then you can even do bombers as the last round just before, say, an attack on Caucasus or, or Russia itself. The point of that is that it all then hits at the same time, so your units are built, uh, your ground units, the infantry units, uh, that you built first, slowly arrive there, they're the slowest units, but they arrive, tanks that are a bit faster, get there at the same time because they're moving faster, even though, even though they were built a bit later, and then right at the end the bombers can just get anywhere, so they hit at the last thing, because the disadvantage that Germany has in particular against Russia is Russia has got lower uh, production, however it's taking what, one, two, three, four, um, you know, any way you go, one, two, three, four, it's like four units, uh, four turns until German units can actually hit Russia, so Russia has the supply, uh, supply line advantage and Germany has some major supply line issues, if you're going to use that sort of analogy, just because it takes uh, four turns. So Russia has four turns to be able to counter a unit that was built in uh, Germany. So the aim of, uh, uh, you know, tr just trying to at least build units that will all catch up and hit at the same time is you, you, you negate a little bit of that advantage that Russia has. Otherwise, you end up with this really uh, bogged down battle with Russia, um, and Germany can't really afford, and Japan can't really afford to get into a bog down battle with Russia. But anyway, so what happened in this battle? So I did that. It was a real slog because uh, there were some very bad battles for Germany, but we're able to take uh, Caucasus using that tactic. Uh, and then um, down in um, uh, uh, Japan, when it looks like you're heading for a bit of a bog down battle, Japan really has to go for India. 
uh, because if you don't, then uh, UK will start just spawning out units and uh, uh, Japan is often building eight or at the most in the earliest sort of game, you know, eight or nine or ten units in the earliest sort of game. They can't match the eight units that, uh, or nine, ten units sometimes, that Russia is producing plus an extra three units here. Uh, so you really have to go for, uh, go for India. So we, uh, in this game too, we um, also lost, uh, I think, an 85, 90% battle for India in about round three or four. So we had to take it a bit later on, I think about round six or seven. Um, and as a result, we just get bogged down in things. You can't have everything. I mean, the most common tactic is to hold strong in Karelia uh, and turn that into a bit of a bastion for the, for the axis. Uh, you, ideally you want to have caucuses as well. Some games you just can't have at all, uh, so you have to sacrifice one for the other. Uh, in this game I decided to, I, mean, I'm, I generally prefer having caucuses over Karelia. Um, the risk here is that uh, the allies start coming down um, and they just get a lot of easy territory uh, here, so a big IPC advantage for the uh, for the um, uh, allies um, which isn't good um, but again you can't have it all if you do hold uh, caucus as strong as uh, as Germany uh, you uh, they can actually gobble up a lot of that I'm actually fine IPC wise for Germany see I'm still on 39 points and I'll show you why because what you can do is if you control uh, Germany for the Axis. You can sort of be building your 10 troops for Germany, but you can also build uh, sort of uh, three or four troops in Caucasus with bomber support that can actually, um, what's happened there? You could actually gobble up, um, you can actually take a lot of ice PCs every turn anyway. So this turn I'll hopefully take Kazakh with Germany. West Russia and Ukraine and what that means is that um, you know you're not to too bad as Germany I can also take this one so Northwest Europe I can also take Poland and Baltic states so you know, if you're holding Caucasus it's not the end of the world uh, if the Allies are coming down through Karelia and if you've got it strong uh, I eventually want to start divesting the uh, German forces in Caucasus because they'll need to be uh, over in Germany and holding France um, and you generally just slowly replace them with Japanese forces. But it's a great little, it's, um, I mean the, the best solution is for Caucasus to be taken by Japan but often the gameplay just doesn't allow that uh, because the, the player after Russia is Japan, uh, is, is, is Germany and it's often Germans that can take it, and Japan's often not, especially in the early game, isn't really in a position to take it. But it's not the end of the world, so if German gets, uh, Germany gets it, even if it's a KGF, you'll see that you know Germany's quite strong here, even though the Allies are coming down. Um, this, you know, we're holding. Um, we're able to, I was able to build another stack by. I don't, I don't need the tax, the tanks in Caucasus anymore, so I was able to pull those over and formed a. Uh, a France stack, which means we're not at least trading that every turn. If they come in strong to Northwest Europe, I also just alternate the stack back and forward so they can't uh, get a big la a landing ground there. So anyway, I'll show you um, uh, um, how that works. Um, uh, the general principles that I want to talk about here are um, uh, if you're in the long game, and we're in this game around 16, principle number one is um, You've got to start looking at the IPC um, table really uh, closely. So in this one, <coughs> I'll show you. <coughs> in terms of IPCs, uh, we've got 56 for Japan, and we can probably pump that up another few by taking various little bits around the places. 39 for allies. So that gets us. Um, uh, I mean, it gets us um, uh, uh, 
95, if my maths is right. Uh, for the Allies, they're doing about 30 plus 42, so 72, 80, 90. So um, in the long game, you have to look at these IPC remaining uh, numbers pretty closely in the national production numbers. And the aim in a long game is just to, uh, you, you just got to find a way to outproduce the opponent. And I'm happy to sit here, even if it takes 30 rounds, I'm happy to sit here, if I'm, if I'm, even if I'm only building up, say, a 5 IPC advantage every turn, uh, it's, it's an eventual win. And then it's just a matter of finding uh, efficient battles is the second key. Just so that we're just generally building up just a little bit stronger every turn. Because otherwise we're at a stalemate here. So uh, Africa's a bit of a stalemate. We, we're able to pump troops into Africa, but then the US does it as well. Uh, I've taken um, uh, Alaska on quite a few occasions, and then they come back and take it back. That just gets swapped uh, back and forward. The Allies are coming uh, quite strong, and as they should, they've moved their front lines as forward as they can, which is Belarusia. They can't move it any further than that because they'll get destroyed. Uh, these are dead zones. Uh, but, um, uh, but this is a bit of a stalemate because uh, then every territory, every turn we take all these back as Germany, and then they take it back their turn. I'm slowly building up a slight advantage here in Caucasus, uh, but it's it's a bit of a slow game. I can produce three in India, uh, and then four in East Indies, plus another couple of units coming through here and there. And I'm trying to exchange, um, do the exchanges with the 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 the, uh, the country that won't I won't need the big stack on. So uh, you want to build up one of the uh, powers as much as you can and trade with the other, the secondary power. So you're not whittling away, say, the Japanese forces on little trades here and there. So I'm using the German forces to do the little trades for uh, Kazakh, West Russia and Ukraine without depleting the uh, Japanese forces. And uh, General AM is doing the same thing. It's, uh, it's playing quite well. But uh, anyway, I'll, so I'll just show you what it looks like um, when we build it. So I want to have sort of 10 uh, infantry for Germany. Uh, we'll do, we'll probably do three into Caucasus, which is fine. Uh, let's actually put a troop in here. It just makes it a little annoying for allies. Then we'll do... Um, Two there. It's probably slightly on the risky side, I guess, but I've got lots of aircraft, so they'll have to pretty much hit everything. Uh, let's see, so we can do aircraft here. I've got lots of aircraft to use. one here too. <clears throat> Have I got enough troops? Let's have a look. I need two for that one. Yeah, I need two for that one. Uh, I think the Japanese will have to take Kazakh. Okay. Strong, strong, and strong. I want to do just as minimal captures as I possibly can because whatever I capture with is just going to get absolutely destroyed uh, with 
the allies next time around, so we just do minimal captures. Uh, when in these long games, it's all about absolute efficiency. Come on, guys. Come on, boy. Uh, so I might not necessarily win every single battle. Are you going to win? No. But that's not the aim. The aim is to have an IPC advantage uh, at the end of the battles. Um, have, uh, we're aiming for sort of a 70-80% sort of capture, capture rate if we can. So we get it in the end. <clears throat> Probably could have done this just with one infantry. Um, So the aim is efficient battles. Um, I might just show on the calculator uh, what that um, looks like. Question is, um, you know, what do you uh, what do you attack with? Uh, so let's just, let's just look at it this way. So let's pretend we're going into a. Um, uh, so so let's imagine that you've got an enemy. Uh, enemy territory with, say, uh, one infantry in it. What's most efficient? Is it most efficient for you to take that with one infantry uh, and a fighter, or two infantry and a fighter is often the way it's done. You want to use fighters because generally any counterpunch is going to destroy whatever's left, so the aim is to capture it as lightly as possible and then the fighters flee after the battle, right? So uh, that's probably the most efficient way to take something rather than just you know, certainly, you know, three or four infantry with artillery will take it, but if they're all going to be destroyed afterwards by a much larger enemy force, uh, you want to try and just capture with um, uh, maybe some fighter support and as little as possible. So if you have a look at this, um, the, the uh, survival rate is 90%, which means that your fighter, probably either your fighter or your um, fighter and infantry will survive. Conquer rate, which means that both will survive, is only 53%. So let's look at that. Um, if you've got a 53% and it's a two IPC territory, uh, then you've sort of won, on average, one IPC. Okay? You've also killed the enemy, which is a three IPC infantry unit, uh, which, um, uh, which means that on average, uh, you're looking at a one IPC profit from the territory and a um, sort of a 90% chance of killing uh, the, the, uh, the infantry. Um, so you're looking at, um, you know, it's, it's a, sort of like a, um, uh, it gives you a little bit of an idea what's, it, what's, what's involved um, of the odds. If you change that to two infantry, uh, yes, uh, you now have a 93% chance of capture. Um, so you've, you've, you've sort of destroyed the enemy unit uh, uh, on this occasion 98% of the time, but you also won the two IPC uh, enemy territory 93% of the time. So a 93% chance of uh, conquering gives us about 1.8, plus about 1.4 in profit, right? Which is uh, shown here on the graph. Uh, so we're looking at about a 3.2 profit. And again, sorry, the f and uh, so one infantry is, uh, is um, uh, one infantry is, um, uh, it was 0.53 times by 5, so about 1 profit. Uh, 
uh, so, sorry, 0.53 times 2 for the, for the territory means a 1 profit on average plus the uh, attack and profit of 0.5. Okay, so uh, general rule that I have, long and short of it, is to say that look, if it's a 2 IPC uh, territory, and if you're certain that your unit's just going to get wiped out uh, again afterwards, I generally do um, uh, do uh, suggest two, two infantry and a fighter uh, when I'm going against a two IPC uh, target. If it's a one IPC uh, territory, I often just do one infantry and one fighter. Again, there's a whole lot of um, other reasons why we capture territories. So there's, there's about five reasons why we capture territories. One is to block the enemy units coming through and, the, and a blitz coming through. Two, the enemy can't use it as a landing ground next time. Three is to get the IPC. Four is to deny the IPCs to the other uh, side. Uh, five, they get they're even uh, restricted from you know uh, building a building a factory on the uh, uh, on the on the on the uh, on the property, and it also forces them to commit forces to try and recover it. But long and short of it, I, 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 for, for, for a lot of battles, you just want to keep it as, as, as minimal as possible. And we're just going to go in as minimal as possible on all of these and just hopefully, um, provided we've got a 70-80% chance of victory, that's fine. The bomber is the one that missed. It's interesting. So then at the end of all these um, battles, that's all right, one hits fine. I was lucky there. Um, you just capture things as lightly as possible and uh, then what you'll we'll see from the, uh, the battle um, summary will show a pretty good IPC advantage if you just capture it lightly and then when they take it back the best they're going to get is, you know, three IPC uh, victory in each turn, or four IPC if it's an artillery. So I'll just show you the um, overall summary. So yes, we lost nine IPCs uh, with three, uh, just three infantry lost. Uh, UK lost 15, and uh, US lost six. And in these long games, that's what's important. If, I, if I'm, you know, I'm 10 IPCs ahead, each turn from that, and then also my production. The production is sort of five or six IPCs ahead. Just a matter of time till this number comes up, and we overtake the uh, the allies and win. So efficient battles is the key. Um, don't overdo it with troops. Uh, general rule I have is yeah, just try and um, if you've got a good a good it depends on how much fighter support you've got too. So you can try and luck it out. And, uh, you know, if there's two, two infantry there, maybe two infantry and uh, some, uh, a, good, a good number of aircraft, if you know you're going to wipe them all out in one turn, the chance of them hitting back uh, two out of two is, um, is a third times a third. So it's one out of nine, if my maths is right, uh, to, um, to survive, which is fine. So most of the time you win that and you don't want to overdo it. Temptations to throw extra stuff in, but then it's it's inefficient. So, so I think we're okay here. So, and if you see, then um, yes, the allies have come in. Uh, they've come in through Karelia. They've come into Belarus, but because of our little um, outpost here in Caucasus, it's producing three or four units each time. It's enough to it's enough to ping some of these uh, territories back. And do it. And the other trick you can do is too, uh, and General AM has been doing this really well, is that he doesn't have to have certain battles with the UK. 
because he's got the US as a backup, so he'll take a bit of a risky battle, an efficient battle, say against these, so maybe just throw one against Poland, one or two against Ukraine with some air support. If he loses, he's always got the US can just do the second battle for the same territory if, it, if, if he doesn't quite get it. So, and you can do that with um, uh, with uh, Germany and Japan as well. So Germany could have perhaps gone in here with maybe one artillery, a little risky with a bunch of aircraft and hopefully knock them out or at least kill, kill the two units. And then Japan can come in afterwards if need be. I just didn't want that one in whatever risk uh, that uh, he could uh, destroy it, but uh, destroy any aircraft as well. But um, I think that's pretty solid. Um, so, and also obviously each turn you just check that there's not enough, uh, that there's no risk of a, uh, of an invasion. I did this before, so I didn't show it on the, the video, but you just do a, a test here. This is, this one can be taken. So France can be taken by UK and then a US punch if you do the numbers but it's a pretty inefficient battle for them they uh, lose out quite a lot in IPCs so I think that's enough to hold it and Germany's pretty strong and I think we've got um, we'll have sort of high 20s in numbers there plus uh, about almost 10 aircraft and I can even pull in five Japanese aircraft if they decide to go for a Hail Mary uh, into Germany so that's where we're at, and um, uh, um, so even though it's a little bit of a um, bit of a stalemate of a game, I think the aim is just to try and aim and uh, get a little bit of an advantage each turn. So I'm just trying to do efficient battles, steal any territories that we can along the way. Um, <coughs> keep up the pressure wherever you can. Try and um, get their units out of position where they can, whether it's inefficient, but mainly these do become a bit of a grind uh, game, but provided you're ahead, it's a lot more satisfying than if you're, if, you're, if you're just those few IPCs behind each turn. Okay, and that's how you do the, the, the long games. And uh, yeah, I, I really, I've just got to say, I really like this, the combo of <clears throat> India then the Caucasus. It's quite good. The, the other way I could have done it, I was thinking about whether I just hold strong in uh, Karelia and let Russia keep Caucasus, but you've then got this uh, blocker between the Japanese and the German forces. So I generally like just to have Caucasus in India. You can't have it all. I mean, they're going to break through somewhere. So if they're going to have uh, their strong base in Karelia, at least I can transfer forces really easy between um, Germany and Japan. If I needed to, for example, I could start rolling some Japanese troops through to Germany. Ideally, it's nice if you can get uh, Caucasus instead controlled by Japan, but often, often the way the gameplay works, that's just not possible. Otherwise, in the comments, just let me know if you can see any other uh, strategies or tactics I can do here. But to me, this is feeling like a long, uh, long haul game. Uh, I am only one uh, victory city away, so technically, and that would most likely be um, uh, Karelia. It's just uh, they've got quite a strong presence there now. I just can't see any feasible way to get it just at the moment. And if uh, if, if the long game is Good. If I'm winning out, then I, um, I'm just happy to have a long game, slowly grind away, getting a slight advantage each turn, and that's uh, that's fine by me. And I'm going to have to put a couple more forces here into India. Um, but if you've got, if you're controlling the center of the board here, see, it just gives you so many options here to um, to send troops into Africa really efficiently. Also threaten all sorts of things here and um, keep a control of this uh, the valuable area around here. So I think we're doing okay uh, in this game. It's just um, a long game, so efficient trading. And uh, I might do a proper video on efficient trading. I was probably a little bit mumbled there about how to work it out. I've got a page somewhere of the stats that are worked out about uh, how to do efficient trading. Um, generally speaking, 
if it's a two, you know, it depends how important it is uh, to, to, to grab, but if it's just an IPC as you're looking for, um, I think in the past I've worked out it's just over three IPC profit uh, to use two units. It's 3.2 uh, IPC profit to use two units um, uh, versus about two profit um, on average uh, to, um, uh, to take it with one unit. However, then you've got to remember that you've probably lost all the units. So if you use two and you succeed and you've got two sitting there, if they're going to be destroyed next turn by seven or eight uh, enemy forces, the, the good move sometimes is to uh, do one-on-one -on -one, uh, plus fighter support, and then it depends on whether you've got two or three. So I'm, I'm often quite happy. It's often slightly more efficient to use one fighter, one infantry, uh, rather than two. But if it's a useful uh, territory, if it's say two or three IPCs, um, I think either is sensible, um, and it comes then to a question of whether you, you know, uh, do you need the forces to, to back up, or uh, to back up, uh, or do you need them for the counterpunch, or do you need them for some other for some, for some other action? All right, probably a little mumbled about that explanation. I'll, I'll try and do a proper video, perhaps on efficient trading. Um, but uh, it's a Selden signing off, and uh, yeah, don't shy away from the long games. Just just aim for it's, it becomes then a game of efficiency, and, uh, and just doing efficient battles. So to see this, Germany is uh, well and truly under siege, but he's still still producing 40 IPCs per turn, so can't complain about that. And um, say so 40 from Germany plus 56. I can probably even get that up a little bit this turn. You know, mid 50s. I think we're okay. All right, Selden signing off.